Dr. Ujim Kim is highly experienced radiologist, working currently in director of innovation and co-founder of Montage Healthcare Solution, and he is staff radiologist in Perelman School of Medicine at University of Pennsylvania. He received his bachelor degree in 1996 and completed the MD in 2001. He completed his fellowship in 2007. Dr. Kim has 47 national and international publications. And he has more than 120 presentations. He is also an active member of prestigious radiological societies um, and institutions like um, European Society of Radiology, Korean Society of Radiology, and RSNA. Please, Dr. Wu King Team, please start your session. Today I'll be speaking on the topic of imaging informatics, uh, using IT solutions to provide value-based care and improve quality. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers and the members of SAR Congress of Radiology for this opportunity to visit Bangladesh. It's my first time here and to give this presentation. And it looks like I'm the only American that made it out here uh, this trip. In case you guys haven't heard of uh, the term imaging informatics, um, it's simply science of information uh, as it pertains to medical imaging when you talk about the word, the term imaging informatics. And it's actually one of the fellowships in the United States that one can get. In fact, when I got my musculoskeletal radiology fellowship, I, at the same time, I received a fellowship in imaging informatics. So first, the disclosure slide. Today, I'll be sharing with you uh, experiences and perspectives coming from the United States. This is my first time visiting Bangladesh, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know how radiologists practice here. Uh, therefore, I'd like is, uh, to take the lessons from what I share with you today, uh, because it may be how you practice radiology in the future, and regardless of what you get out of it, um, I believe you, I can share with you today how technology can be used to improve medical imaging uh, and deliver be better care. So. In the United States today, radiology faces many challenges, from declining reimbursements to increasing regulations and increasing competition coming from both within and outside radiology. The non-radiologists, like cardiologists, uh, want to do more imaging. And within radiology, there is growing competition among groups, as well as from teleradiology companies in the United States. And if you can't differentiate yourself, in this market, you risk something called commoditization. And commoditization will lead to a race to the bottom. More and more radiologists are feeling burnt out, especially in the United States, uh, because there is growing discontent among radiologists uh, over this pressure and increasing workload. So the question is, how do you survive in this environment? More importantly, how can you succeed? I believe one of the solutions is something called data analytics. And this talk today will be about uh, data analytics. Now, many of you may have never heard the term analytics in, uh, being used in radiology or have used it. And if you have never used it in radiology, then you're in for a treat because I'm going to share with you how you can uh, use analytics to improve uh, quality of care. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not alone in thinking that this is the case. Uh, in fact, there was a recent article in August 20 of 2015 in the uh, magazine Diagnostic Imaging titled Analytics Can Save Radiology. And it is said there's significant strategic value in analytics for radiology. Furthermore, analytics can help you improve efficiency and effectiveness. Nowadays, you, hear, you see the word value being used everywhere in healthcare, especially in the United States. And radiology is no exception. Several years ago, American College of Radiology start, started what it called the Imaging 3.0 initiative. And at this conference, I also saw an abstract uh, that talked about delivering value at this conference. So it looks like similar um, discussions are happening in Bangladesh as well. Now, Imaging 3.0 is radiologist's roadmap for transitioning from volume-based to value-based imaging care. And one of the changes we'll see in the Imaging 3.0 era is this transition going from the volume-based to value-based care. In the past, in the United States, we used to get paid regardless of what we did. Uh, hence, radiology, and still is, a very lucrative field. Volume-based meaning more you read, the faster you read, the more you get paid. So people used to pay a lot of attention and pay uh, a lot of focus on do 
doing a uh, heavy volume. Now, while volume remains important, the field is now changing and moving towards value-based care because um, whether we like it or not, this is how we're going to be paid in the future. And Imaging 3.0 has five pillars that include appropriateness, quality, safety, efficiency, and satisfaction. And in 2014, in the uh, Journal of American College of Radiology, there was an article on this very topic where it describes what it called the imaging value chain. Value chain is a concept borrowed from Michael Porter's very well-known book called um, Competitive Advantage, Creating and Sustaining Superior Performance, where each link of the chain represents a discrete number of unique value opportunity uh, activities that can drive competitive advantage. This figure in this particular article, if you look, is a schematic representation of this, what they call imaging value chain. Now take a look what's in the center. Interconnected with every link in the chain is data mining and business intelligence. Hence, highlighting its utmost importance, even amongst radiologists. Now, both as someone who's an academic radiologist, and as you saw on my disclosure slide that I'm also a vendor, I get asked the following question quite often. I can appreciate the importance of value-based care, but how do you practically deliver value-based care in radiology? Specifically, how can analytics deliver value-based care? In order for me to answer that question, you have to start with the word value itself first. So what is value? Well, Warren Buffett, a famous investor in the United States, once said, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Thomas Davenport, in his book titled Big Data at Work, defines three classes of value. There are cost reductions, decision improvements, and improvements in products and services. Now, let's take the other term, analytics, and look at the definitions. According to the uh, CIO, Business Intelligence Definitions and Solutions article, business intelligence and analytics has been defined as a set of techniques and tools to analyze organizations' raw data, into meaningful and notice something quite interesting. Both cut costs, both improve decision making, and both deal with improving or developing new products and services. In fact, the goal of analytics is to turn data into insights, into actions. So if you know that the analytics is important, what is the problem? Well, the problem is that existing systems are slow and dumb, especially when it comes to radiology. In fact, when you're limited to analyzing metadata only, now what I mean by metadata, things like when you actually uh, generate radiology reports, you know, what was the modality? Was it an MR? Was it a CT? When was it done? Who ordered it? Who reported it? You're only limited to basic operational metrics, like turnaround times, volumes, and RVUs. However, they only scratch the surface because most analytic solutions that are out there, even for radiologists, use only the metadata from radiology and throw the most important part in our field, the actual radiology reports themselves. It is widely accepted that about 80% of all data in healthcare and in radiology is unstructured, like our radiology reports, they're free text. Therefore, you would be missing a lot if you don't analyze the free text of the radiology reports itself. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have heard of something called NLP, Natural Language Processing, but it is a science, computer science, that deals with allowing the computer to try to comprehend and get meaning from the actual human language. By using NLP, you can detect things like errors in radiology reports, compliance, find follow-up recommendations, and assess level of uncertainty in radiology reports. And if you think NLP is not important, guess what? 91% of the chief medical information officers who were surveyed recently said that uh, it's becoming more and more important in the coming years. So, if you're able to combine the basic, basic metadata with the full text of radiology reports, you can do so much more than simply analyzing operational metrics. In fact, I will demonstrate in the next 10 minutes or so how analyzing radiology reports can lead to decreased costs and I will demonstrate something I like to call quality analytics, which can be used to reduce length of stay, improve compliance, decrease errors, and medical leave risks, and evaluate outcomes and quality. Why quality analytics, you might ask? Many have defined value by the following equation. Value equals quality divided by cost. Therefore, 
Emphasis on the, uh, higher quality is an essential component of delivering value-based care. Terry Yates once said, developing quality metrics will be a crucial task for radiology groups. Now is the time to start proactively tracking quality metrics. In fact, with quality analytics, I'm going to challenge your very notion of analytics, taking you beyond the operational metrics. So, if you're already practicing radiologist today, ask yourself the following questions. For example, are you able to ask today in your radiology groups, how many PE studies performed in the emergency room are positive? You can analyze uh, imaging appropriateness and outcomes if you are able to ask a question. <coughs> and then, taking that one step further, who are the ER physicians who ordered them? You know, who the most number of positive or negative studies? Again, JACR uh, recently published an article on something called actionable findings, also known as critical results. Some of you may have heard of that. In fact, in the United States, it's a joint commission requirement that you actually tabulate how many critical results you actually report in your radiology reports. Now, in the old days, what people used to do is they would print out 1,000 random reports, go into the back office, and manually tabulate how many critical results they saw. That would take hours and hours. Imagine by using MLP, now the computers can do this in a matter of seconds. But can you find out all those reports where you have critical results where the radiologists forget to you know, notify the referring clinicians? By using quality analytics, you can actually identify those radiologists <coughs> who are not being compliant. Now, one of the hot topics at this year's RSNA, I know you will prescript analytics, meaning taking the predictions from the predictive analysts, and actually the analytics will tell you how you should do your job. One of the best companies for this is UPS. UPS takes serious concern about care about their data, more as serious as for their packages. So, what the computer does is the following. Computer every morning tells the UPS truck and says, you know what, I need you to uh, store the, uh, the load of the trucks in this particular manner, in this way, and I want you to deliver the packages in this way. By computer actually prescribing how the drivers okay. should deliver their packages, they were actually able to deliver 120 packages a day instead of 90 packages a day. So for UPS, if they can save just one minute per driver per day, it translates to $14.5 million of savings per year which is about 1.1 billion takas. Saving one mile per driver per day for UPS translates to $30 million of uh, savings per day, per year. That's 2.3 billion takas. Now, there's a famous uh, US uh, commercial from Bayer, uh, the aspirin company, where the note says, hey, your heart attack arrives in two days, and then there's a voiceover that comes over and says, Laura's heart attack didn't come with a warning. Well, maybe not today, but in the future, with prescriptive analytics, predictive analytics, we may be able to predict heart attacks from coming. And with prescriptive analytics, we may be able to do preventions pre to prevent from that heart attack from happening. So there are two paths in front of radiology today. One is a volume-based success. And this is how many of you radiologists may feel every day. I certainly do. I can tell you that I could be reading as many as 240 x-rays by lunchtime. Uh, that's how many volume we have to deal with. And another one is for value-based success. And instead of choosing one direction versus the other, analytics can help you bridge the gap between imaging 2.0, the volume-based care, to value-based care of three, imaging 3.0. And in the last 20 minutes, I hope I was able to convince you how value is tied to analytics and how quality is tied to value. And by taking analytics beyond operational metrics and using it to improve quality, we can reduce costs and partake in delivering value-based care. And with that, I'd like to conclude my talk. Thank you very much.